So the date is August 9th, um, 2022. Um, I'm Hanson Sue here with Diana Mary Shapiro. And so um, first to begin, um, where and when were you born? I was born in uh, Des Moines, Iowa in, uh, on February 20th, 25th, 1939. Um, I grew up in, well, the first three years, first six months of my life was in Des Moines. The first three years, next two and a half or three years was in Milwaukee. And from then on, I was in a, in Southwest Iowa where my mother had grown up. Uh, my father was in the Soil Conservation Service. He, he, he had been, he had gotten into the Soil Conservation ser Service through the, C having been in the CCC camps uh, during the Depression. And my mother, my mother's father had a big farm in, in, in southwestern Iowa, near, some, about 50 miles um, east of Omaha. And um, I'm a kid from Iowa. Farm kid. Oh. Um, so, did you, do you have any siblings? I have uh, one younger brother who's uh, a doctor in Colorado. I don't have much contact with him, but uh, he was my brother. <laughs> um, um, so, growing up in Iowa was... Uh, was an, quite a, was its own sort of unique experience. It had its pluses and its minuses. I'm very glad that I got to grow up there. I'm also pretty glad that I didn't have to stay there. Yeah. Um, any so, dear parents, um, what's your parents' background? So my my um, my father. Uh, his, grew up down in, he was, he grew up in Bethany, Missouri. Uh, he was, they were really, really poor. Um, one of my favorite summers as a child was uh, with, uh, with my grandma Mayhew, my father's, uh, my maiden name is Mayhew. And um, my father's mother was an amazing, amazing woman. And uh, I got to spend a summer down there but the unique thing about it was, is there was no running water, uh, there was no uh, plumbing, uh, and, and no electricity. And it was so, it was, it was a very uh, unique experience that, you know, very few people at, in this day and age in this country uh, experience. Um, so I sort of have seen quite a span of of civilization <laughs> as uh, as I've lived my life. Um, you know, most of my life was in, in agricultural surroundings. My father would, grew up working on farms and um, um, my mother was um, just a, a young child, her, her father had the, her, her it was her grandfather who who had gotten the farm and that and then her father inherited most of it and uh uh she grew up in a small town uh Boca Iowa uh which is uh, right on highway 80 east uh which is you know uh close to Omaha 50 miles about 50 miles from Iowa it was a, a town of uh, 2,000 people around, left at or less. Uh, I spent uh, much of my uh, young years there up until I was in the uh, eighth grade. Then we moved to another town, which was the county seat, which was some, somewhat larger and had a bigger, slightly bigger high school, uh, Harlan, which was Harlan, Iowa. Um, I was a I was an active kid. <laughs> I was in the band. I was in the marching band. I was in choruses. I, you know, I was in theater. I did lots of stuff. Uh, so I was pretty active. 
then I ended up going to, to university at uh, Valparaiso University. My mother was very Lutheran, and um, um, Valparaiso is, was a Lutheran university, and I got a scholarship there. So it was, mom was happy, and I was relieved I didn't, that there was enough money for me to go. I ended up, so, so I didn't end up getting a training that would, uh, you would expect uh, that I would end up uh, being in software. Uh, my uh, undergraduate degree is uh, in theater. And I have a minor in philosophy and a minor in theology. So I'm very well prepared for uh, cocktail parties, or you might say small talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I also had a lot of uh, kind of natural, I don't know, sort of reasoning talent, I guess. You know, I was, uh, and, and I, was a, I was a very, I was avariciously curious as I was growing up. Um, so I was always interested and always wanted to know how things worked and always wanted to uh, see how things were put together. Uh, and that served me very well when I, we were, when I was, began working with Alan. We used to talk about um, how it would, one of my models for how, it, how programming should be this is not how it actually probably turned out, but how it is it should be kind of like um, working on a Model T. A Model T is something that you can, well, it's sort of like a lot of kids take, take a watch apart, the old pocket watches. You could take them apart and you could actually put them back together if you were clever. And the same with like with the early um, farm equipment and uh, early cars, they were, rationalizable you could understand them they were you could figure it out it's not it, that was one that in the early days of uh, putting small talk together that was one of the ways I thought about it when we were trying to make it understandable when when you tried to make the code human understandable so that, that you should be able to look at it and, and reason about what it was meant to do um, and um, I, you know, that notion is, has never been terribly popular, but it's still something I think is pretty important. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you mentioned you mentioned you had you had a uh, a degree a minor in theology. Where yes. were you? And you mentioned your mother was uh, Lutheran. Very were your so were your both of your parents religious and were you particularly no. religious? No, uh, well, I was, you know, no. I mean, I ended up not being a part of the church. I, I struggled with it all my entire life, really, trying to understand what my mother was getting and, and feeling very bad that I didn't. Um, the sort of, you know, the, 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 the climate, the, the the religious climate in in, in from growing up was, you know, um, if good things happened, it was God's fault, and if bad things happened, it was your fault, and so that was kind of the attitude, um, uh, sort of a um, work righteousness kind of theology. Uh, although I, it was Lutheran, and that they would claim they would say that's not so, but that especially the, the branch of Lutheranism I, I grew up in, it was pretty, pretty rigorous. My mother, you know, believed in literal interpretation of scripture. My father, on the other hand, was, you know, he, he went along, uh, but he was not particularly um, devout um, and, um, and uh, was much more, sort of literate and, hu and hu hu humanita humanitarian, I think, would be a way of putting it. Um, or humanist? Humanist, yeah. 
Um, he's the one I really learned things about trusting yourself and being yourself. Um, and, um, and, um, and actually not being so hard on yourself sometimes. Um, but my mother was pretty, I mean, my, it, my mother, it was, it was hard for my mother. I mean, she, there were pieces of her that were uh, very uh, uh, lusty and full of life, and which was very much true of my father. But uh, it was also hard for her because the, there were so many uh, kind of moral prohibitions um, surrounding the, uh, the uh, in the religious life. But it, there, there was a period of time when I was very, I struggled very hard. I mean, that's part of why I ended up majoring in th theology at Valparaiso was to explore uh, through some of the people. Uh, there, were, there was a, a religion, there was a, uh, a theology faculty at Valparaiso. And so I was really struggling trying to figure out what are these people, why is it that I don't, get what they get. Um, eventually I decided I wasn't wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah. At least for myself. Yeah. Um, what other sort of uh, interests or hobbies or subjects, uh, favorite subjects did you have growing up? Um, well, I mean, I you know, um, I, I was pretty athletic. My father had, we had, we had. I know this doesn't sound like somebody who grew up poor, but we did. But my father also had a couple, some horses, so that was a big part of what took what took my attention while I was growing up. Uh, we would go on, on uh, trail rides, and we would uh, actually uh, show show it at the sh at like the county fair or something like that. I was, you know, I I played basketball. I was I was as I said, I played in the band, played a trumpet. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, Chris Jeffers used to say about uh, the learning group was. Whenever we were looking to hire someone, and you know that what we uh, that you know pretty much anybody can learn how to program, but what we really needed was a string base. So uh, that was that was uh, uh, so that let me that that let me fit right in. Um, so what, you know, what trumpet. And so you know, Alan is a great, is an incredible musician, and uh, um, I, I, you know, like he built his own organ for God's sakes. It's unbelievable. Um, but he, he, one of the things he did as as, a, as our group was forming was uh, teach us all about uh, classical music, and um, he taught us about a lot of other things as well. But that was one of the things that he particularly. Uh, made sure we knew about. Uh, you know, the uh, Hermann Hesse's uh, The Magister Ludi book was something he would use as a, kind of the, a notion of the importance of music as a way of, as, as a uh, kind, of, kind of an assistance to thinking, to how you think. If, you're, if you can play music, that helps you also in your mentation process or informs your mentation process may be a better way to put that. So uh, did you have any uh, influential uh, or favorite mentors or teachers? Well, um, I think probably the most notable teacher uh, was my high school um, uh, speech teacher, theater te teacher. That's really how I got really interested in theater. Um, and he was he was probably 
sort of most influential in inspiring me to realize that I should look at, that it was okay to look at, I guess, what you might call full self-expression. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you know, he, he took us off to, uh, you know, contests and he, took, he wrote a one act play which I performed in when I was in high school and I was in plays when I was in high school. And that, he was the most, uh, I guess, influential. Um, no, there weren't there weren't really any other super influential teachers. I mean, I I liked my, some of my teachers quite a bit, but you know they they were they were nice, and I was a disgustingly well behaved child, so you know they liked me probably as well. Um, the but no, I don't have any. I'm trying to think is was there anybody in college that really uh, grabbed me not not really so much I was just you know I was sort of a uh, crazed Democrat at that time um, <laughs> in, in college I was uh, I was uh, co-editor of the uh, of the college magazine, um, and then you know I was in the theater department, so I was in plays. Um, but I don't think there's. I'd say I can't say this was anybody that influenced me uh, in the same way. Say that Alan influenced me, for instance. Uh, uh, so I, uh, yeah. yeah. So you mentioned. Um, you were a crazed Democrat. That, did, were you an activist, or were you um, were you sort of not well, the nor like were most of the people? To the extent at the you school? could be an activist, you know, I wrote an art, I wrote a uh, editorial. Um, uh, the the name of the magazine uh, at uh, the Operazo was called the Lighter, uh, and I wrote an article uh, based on uh, Kennedy's speech about uh, ask not what you. Your country can do for that's not what you your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And so that was kind of my uh, where I where I stood when I was in college. Uh, I've I've since become kind of more uh, what I guess libertarian kind of, although <laughs> right now I'm I'm doubtful that we know how to govern ourselves in any dimension, but. Uh, uh, you have to keep hoping, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what years were you in college? I was in college between. Uh, I graduated in '61, '57 to '61. Oh wow! Okay. A long time ago. Um, whoa! <laughs> it was so when that's... Kennedy is when was Kennedy was elected. Oh wow! That's considerably uh, earlier than yeah. Okay. Um, I'm old. You have to realize I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in 1939. Oh wow. Um, so then, uh, so what? What were your plans for um, you know a, a work or I, career? What was I going to do with my life? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't know. You know, I suppose in some dim way, I thought. Uh, uh, I would try to uh, get into theater, uh, but I was pretty quickly disabused of that. And, uh, um, so, you know, I got to New York and was part of the, you know, pseudo, you know, I was, I was never really beat or I was never really hip or I was never really any of the things, but I was, you know, I was... I sniffed around all of that. Um, um, I worked in. So, an, go ahead. No, I was just gonna. Oh, go ahead. I was. I worked in. A, I worked in a public relations firm for a while when I was in New York, and. Um, um, 
worked in a um, um, where else did I? I worked in a crazy place that won't make any sense. So it was uh, they sold um, machining parts, uh, but it was just a matter of of sustenance, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to think, you know. I, life really got interesting once I got to California, and um, um, I met you know I met I met my husband and we I got married out in Los Angeles and. Uh, we were married for about five years, I guess, something like that. And, um, so, how did you go from New York to lot to Los Angeles? Well, let's see. In the between there, I also actually went to um, law school for a year. Uh, oh, really? At, Valpar at Valparaiso, yeah. And actually, um, uh, I left out an important piece there. Uh, I actually, uh, right after college, um, I spent a summer out in Tennessee at a, play, uh, uh, a place called Little Smoky, which is a, uh, a home that had been built by um, Harry Price, uh, who was a, uh, I don't know, it's too much, it's a hard story to tell, but it was a great place to spend a summer, and um, from there I went to Washington, D.C., and uh, that was right after I had graduated, and uh, I spent the summer with a friend at, in Tennessee, and we went to, we went and lived in, went to live in um, uh, D.C., and I managed to get a job at the, uh, Washington, at the Washington Post. And that was that was when Kennedy was president, so that was an extremely exciting time. And I, you know, I was there long enough to get, you know, I, I was first I was running copy, and then I, I did I did eventually get to be a reporter. Wrote a lot of obituaries, eventually got to write a couple articles, but I really didn't. I really hated it, and uh, um, I, to this day, I'm not uh, terribly. I, you know, I, it's not that I write that badly, but I really don't like it at all. So I avoid it as I, as much as I possibly can. Um, um, and so I realized I didn't really want to be in the in the newspaper business. So I took the uh, the LSA the LSAT the lawyer thing t test and got a scholarship to Valparaiso's Law School. Spent a year at that, and I do it. I I I really enjoyed studying the law, but I was pretty sure I didn't want to practice the law. So then, from there, I went to New York. Oh, okay. Okay. So then, how did you decide to move from New York to California? Well, um, basically, romance. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would do it. <laughs> um, you know, the I was young and uh, and um, there was it was there to be had, and so I mean, you know, New York was also it was all happening. This was the this was the uh, '60s, and uh, you know, LSD was happening. You know. Uh, Vietnam was happening, lots of in quotes important stuff, and um, and so I kind of found my way out there, um, and um, met Don Mary. That's where the Mary comes from, uh, actually. My actual name oh. is Mayhew. Okay, but because I went to work. When I was married, with, when I was married to Don, is when I went to work at Park, and um, uh, so everybody knew me as Don, Mar as uh, Diana Mary. Don, Don, uh, he and I split up after I was at Park for I guess about five years, four, maybe two or three years, 
three or four years, something like that. And uh, but I stayed Diana Mary. I mean, that was such a great last name. Why, why wouldn't I? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know we can put on our Christmas cards. You know, a very merry, very merry Shapiro Christmas. You know, <laughs> which is what we do. Um, yeah. So no, I just find I it there. fascinating that you, that you your current name is 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 hyphenated, but you still part of it is still your your former yeah. husband. And that's just the that's just an accident. Well, it's just an accident of what I was I, when I was working at Park. You know, everybody knew me as Diana Mary, and for me to go mm -hmm. back to my previous name would have been, I don't know, just seemed weird ever, since everybody knew me by that name and, right. uh, um, you know i didn't have that i wouldn't didn't have that deep attachment to mayhew um i don't have an unattachment to it but i just you know and so it, 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 you know there was no there was no particular animus between don and i we just it didn't work out uh, yeah yeah hmm. um could you talk about your first ever experience with computers? Yeah, I can try. Um, so, Don Don worked in uh, aerospace uh, at uh, TRW down in Los Angeles, and um, he uh, I used to he was I called him an orbit mechanic. He was. Uh, Somebody you know who figured orbits and trajectories and delta v's and things like that. And um, um, so this is for the space. For this space. Is, well, this is it was more for defense than it, it oh, was. Oh right. I mean, okay. It was kind of both, so for ballistic it, missiles. Yeah, ballistic stuff. stuff. Yeah. Okay. But it was also uh, for putting people out there. But it was more satellites as well. You know, getting satellites yeah, okay. up. Uh, I think that was kind of mostly what he what he was involved in. Some of it was so uh, secret that you know nobody was supposed to know about it, um, and uh, and mostly didn't. Um, but he, uh, 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 like I, became disenchanted with uh, the newspaper and um, and. And other things, uh, he became disenchanted with that uh, being in that business, and so he wanted to become a lawyer. So that meant I had to, I had to become employed. I had not been employed after we were after we were first married, and um, and he got into uh, law school in at, in Santa Clara, in up near Palo Alto. Santa Clara is, I think, yeah. one, two, two, two towns south, something like that. Yeah, so at, at Santa Clara University specifically? Yeah, Santa Clara University. Yeah, yeah okay, I know, please. And uh, so I had, uh, I had also, uh, by the by, uh, 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 become uh, confident at speed writing, uh, which was uh, sort of, uh, you know, I, Getting a job as a secretary was was always an easy thing to do and get that way to make money, and um, so when I I thought when I uh, when we went up there that that's what I would end up doing, but I did I went not quite on the back of a matchbook but close. Uh, I went to one of these computer schools, um, you know, six uh, eight weeks I think it was. This is when there were at the IBM, it was just before the 360, but right around that time. And uh, one of the things you did was report generation, and one of the things you learned how to do was wire a board, you know, plugs. Uh, what, what did they call that? I, I don't remember what they called it when you wired, basically you you did the programming by wiring the back of a circuit board, of some sort. Oh yeah, like a patch patch. Yeah, I, I can't I can't remember what they called it. There was a name for it. And the other thing, they just had I think they had one they had a three sixty. 
what what was the thing before the 360? What did I don't? I think it was a 360. I'm not absolutely sure. But seventy ninety series or fourteen oh one series. Fourteen, maybe it was fourteen oh one. The point is, is that I learned basic assembler language while I was at that school. And that was incredibly revealing to me as to how computers worked. You know, I mean, that I kind of really got, kind of got the idea. So uh, that I wanted to, that's what I really wanted to figure out a way to become a programmer. You know, I thought it was not, I thought it was going to be something much more, much less, mon, much more mundane than what, what Park ended up being. But alas and alack, an eight, an eight, uh, an eight week, uh, uh, an eight week uh, wonder school, computer school, doesn't get you a lot of employment, uh, even in those days. And um, so I ended up um, um, uh, going around interviewing. And so the reason I was doing this was because we needed to have. We need to pay the rent while Don was going to law school. Right. And so you had already moved here since he was at Zenith. We had, yeah, we had moved north to, had to do this. And we had some wherewithal in order to kind of make this all happen. I mean, it wasn't a super, it was just, it was necessary for me to find work. And, um, you know, I didn't have to do it tomorrow, but I had to do it probably in the next month or two or something. It was more, it was like that kind of. And, um, so I went around interviewing uh, for secretarial positions, basically. And um, I interviewed at uh, Data General, and I interviewed at Park, and I interviewed at one other place that I no longer remember. Um, and when I interviewed at Park, uh, I, uh, one of the people I talked to was Bob Taylor. And I actually got an offer at both Park and Data General, and the Data General was a better offer, but I knew that I wanted to be at Park. I knew there was something really going on there. You know, I, and so I was smart enough to know that and, and understand that. And um, I ended up uh, being a secretary for the, so they had, um, let's see, was it four labs at Park? They had the general sciences and optical sciences. That was who I was secretary. I was secretary for the the two guys who were the the head of those. That's who I was secretary for to start out with. That's where I went. There was oh yeah, there was computer science and then there was system science. System science is where the learning group was eventually, where I eventually ended up. Where I thought I was wanted to end up was in the computer science group. Because Taylor, I was just gaga over. Taylor was just amazing, in my estimation. I, mean, I just there was something deeply resonant about, and all the people that he had working for him. You know, I mean, you know, he had Bob Flagel and Dick Schaup and you know uh, Thacker and Lamson and I mean, you know, McCrite. They were all just amazing people, and um, you know, Thacker and Lamson had done the. Um, uh, what was it called? The Berkeley BCC, Berkeley Computer yeah, Company. Yeah, yeah, the Berkeley Computer Company, and you know they were all hot shots, you know. I mean, but they were just, and they were just a, so much fun. And you know, it was the '60s. You know, it was well. It was actually I started in uh, uh, seventy. I think it was January of '71. Uh, so it was after the 60s, but it was still very much that kind of feel. You know, we had beanbag chairs and everybody, you know, uh, uh, smoked dope and, you know, the stuff like that. Not everybody did, but I mean, that was the, that was the flavor of the, of the, um, that was kind of the ambiance of the social society that, this, that they had there. And it was just a lot of fun, um, and I knew I wanted to be a part of that. And um, so um, I assiduously worked for Jerry uh, Lukowski and uh, uh, John Erbach 
in the uh, optical sciences and general sciences and uh, uh, sort of made myself slightly crazy doing that. Um, but mostly I would hang out down in the computer science end of the building. This was on Porter Drive when it was still on Porter Drive. And um, eventually I, um, I uh, so eventually I got and had an opportunity. So Bob Taylor basically got, was required to hire a boss. This is all incredibly ironic, but he had, so he hired, they hired, or, or he was hired, Jerry Elkind was hired uh, to run the computer science lab. Even though, in my opinion, the computer science was, lab was all Taylor. Uh, and um, I, I would contend that to this day. Um, Jerry was a great guy, and he, you know, and, and he was very nice to me, and I, and that was where I got to learn about um, word processing. Uh, uh, so at that time, there were these, um, what were they called? They were, there was a name for the things. They were basically tape-driven uh, editing machines and they were used in legal, for mainly they were used for legal, creating legal documents, they were for boiler, what they called boilerplate. Um, and so, you know, you'd make up a contract and then you could, it allowed you to type in the name, type in the dates, you know, do a various different things programmatically and then run it. And run it, you might want to run it several times, you know, and it was, uh, so it was kind of a, it was, it was kind of a computer, but it was, uh, it was really a, a selectric typewriter being run with tape. And there was a version of it that was run from Timeshare, which is the version that we had that we started to use. In the, and that's when I went to work for Jerry, and that's how I got into the computer science lab. And, and working for Jerry was when I got to use this uh, word processing uh, uh, machinery uh, for creating their documents, uh, and it was connected to a timeshare, to timeshare, um, and so you basically could enter. You know, it, it was you were, it was a selectric typewriter. That it was a terminal. It was like a terminal, and it was a selectric typewriter, and you could enter things, but it, you could you know, you could correct things. You didn't have to you know. So for for the first two years or however long I was there before I got to Jerry's uh, office, <laughs> you know, every time you typed a paper, it had to be three carbons, and if you made a mistake, then you had to start over, sort of, you know, and it was, it was horrible. Um, but so the, this electric device uh, was just like a godsend. Made a horrible racket. Uh, we covered it with a... Uh, Acoustic device, which helped a little, uh, and this this at that time I was very close friends with, and still am close friends with uh, Adria Adrian Payne was her name. She, she was uh, Taylor's secretary, and um, so she and I were sort of across from one another. Down one, this was by this time we had. When I first started with Jerry, we were still at, in Porter, but we had we moved up the hill to the the building that's a, kind of across the street from where Park is today, uh, mm -hmm. to the new building. With this, it's uh, it's just across the road from it, uh, and that was that was the computer and system science lab. And, okay. uh, that's they moved into that building and. General Science. Coyote Hill. Yes, Coyote Hill. Thank you. That's that's exactly correct. <laughs> um, and um, um, so uh, Adrian has changed her name since, so she's Adria now. So I will refer to her as Adria. Uh, where we, she and I, were parked at one end of the, uh, that Coyote Hill building. 
Um, and uh, we were pumping out uh, documents for the computer science lab, you know, for Butler and uh, and Schaup and Flagel and uh, and uh, playing softball and playing football and <laughs> having a, just an amazing, amazing time. Uh, um, my park experience was just totally incredible from the very beginning. Um, um, so anyway, that is that was kind of so I got I so I started in general sciences. I went to computer sciences, worked for Jerry. I think I worked for him. I don't know, maybe a couple of years, maybe not quite that long. And what year? Well, let's we'll have to figure it out. It must be what 74, 75, 70. So I went there in January of seventy one. And. Um, so I don't know when we, I think we moved to Coyote Hill maybe in 73 or 74. Um, so around that time, I don't know when I actually worked, went to work for Alan. That's something that's knowable, but I just don't remember exactly what the date was. Um, um, the event that happened uh, is kind of a good story. Um, so, Alan had noticed, so he had noticed, uh, uh, noticed that going when he was, so the, uh, the uh, system sciences lab was also in that building. And he would come over and, I mean, he was as much in the computer sciences as anybody. I mean, Alan is Alan, and, you know, he's, he's a polymath, he's unbelievable, but... Uh, but you know, and ever, nobody. The, the those differences were really very wishy-washy uh, for a long time, um, and um, he would he would come by and he would see that we were doing I, I was doing programmatic like things, like a programmer might. That was just a no thing he noticed. With the timeshare word processor. With the timeshare word processor. And, uh, but never, nothing was ever said. And then, so maybe about, I don't know. So the, this is a, over a period of probably about a year, maybe, maybe a little less. Uh, they started to hire interns, people, you know, to teach how to program. And when that happened, I, I said, you know, I'd really like a chance to do that. Uh, you know, uh, I would really like an opportunity to do that, and um, and so um, well, okay, maybe we can find somebody. And um, Alan, so I went. So I don't exactly know how Alan and I got together, but somehow I I probably I must have I must have talked to him somehow, and he said, basically he said. If you can learn recursion, I'll hire you. So he, he personally gave me, I think it was probably three or four lessons in Lisp, using Lisp, uh, to teach me recursion. And I was able to learn recursion. <laughs> and so he hired me. Um, and that was, that was, uh, that was, an incredible unfolding, you know, and I, you know, I could, you know, I was like a, you know, you'll pardon my expression, a pig in shit, you know, I mean, I just thought this was the most incredible thing. And, you know, I was just really taken with all the stuff that was going on. I mean, the stuff that Flagel and Shop were doing with, in graphics. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, when I first went to work for Alan, uh, there were no altos, so we had, uh, Data General machines, uh, Novus, uh, and one of them was connected to a character generator, which kind of was the way you could do bitmap, bitmap uh, graphics. It was, you could write to that generator, and that's the first, like the first Cookie Monsters you you may have seen, or may have, somebody may have talked about. Well, I'm pretty sure we're done on the character generator.
Um, and um, and I, that's where I wrote my first uh, character scanning programs on that data general. And I, because uh, I had to share it with, uh, mainly I had to share it with uh, Duvall. Uh, what was Duvall's first name? Bill, Bill Duvall, yeah, Bill Duvall, who was, who, who was, you know, the word, uh, who was the, uh, the NLS guy, you know. The, yeah. And um, so he, he, was, he was the hot shot, but I, and I was just learning basically data, data general machine language. So the first thing I did was this ROM blowing program, and that was on ANOVA as well. And that was, uh, they needed to blow ROMs. I guess during the, I don't know, I don't exactly, what, what were they doing? I guess it must have been during, while they were uh, uh, building the first Altos, you know, making, or no, no, it was while they were doing the, uh, the, uh, the multi-access, the Max. Oh, know, Max, the, okay. Yeah. So that's uh, they, 71. No, that, well, that was, it was, it wasn't built in 71, I don't think. It was, it was, it was proposed in 71. Oh, okay. So it was built uh, later? It took, well, no, it just took, you know, it took a while to put it together. I mean, they were building, a, a, they were building basically a mainframe computer from scratch. Because they, you know, they had, to, it, they, they, they wanted to buy uh, Sigmas. I mean, sorry, they wanted to buy... PDP-10s, yeah. PDP-10s. Yeah, uh, uh, PDP, PDP yeah. You're right. And, uh, but they wouldn't let them buy PDP-10, so they built PDP-10, basically. And, uh, and I think the, the program that I wrote, wrote was for the purposes of blowing ROMs. So, I mean, ROM is just, I mean, basically is a program to write programs. I mean, to write a, you know, write a program on a chip. Right. Well, by blowing, what, what do you mean by blowing? Uh, well, so you, t uh, read only, so you take, um, programming. So you, you, you burn the circuits. I believe that's what it must oh, be. Oh, okay. You know, you actually, oh, okay, okay. um, we call it a ROM blow. So, I mean, there there must have been some very simple circuits that you could take a chip that was virginal somehow and program it like once. Oh, okay. So, okay. So it's basically writing the ROM. Yeah, it's writing it. Blow. We we they called it blowing out. I don't. Why did they do that? But they did. That's what they called it. Um, and it, I mean, I didn't really understand <laughs> terribly much what I was doing, but I, you know, I I was knew enough how to. To, to create images, basically, uh, or numbers, you know, create numbers in certain places. Um, uh, but I was, you know, I was, I, was, I was way out of my league, but I was, you know, I'm a fairly clever, <laughs> fairly clever clogs, and uh, so, you know, I did, it, I did it okay. I succeeded at that, but I was very happy to get to go to the Nova and start writing machine code on the on the Nova for the character generation, and the, that was that was the whole purpose behind that was to uh, for for programming the Alto. Eventually, that was I mean the reason for learning how to do scan, character scanning was because we needed a character scanner when the Alto got built, and uh, so that was the that was the. Even before small talk, that was what I was involved in, and this was, you know, around the time when Dan and uh, Ted were there, and they were starting. Dan had written a, a very early version of uh, small talk interpreter, and um, so now I want to. I do want to say, I want to be very careful about this. I may tell you some lies because I don't. But it's not because I'm intentionally telling you lies. It's because I'm not remembering accurately. Sure. So please, anybody who wants to fact check, please fact check me. And I, uh, I'm, I will not be insulted or in any way. Uh, just, you know, I, I mean, all of us did lots of stuff. And I mean, as far as I was concerned, 
as time unfolded, uh, uh, you know, Alan, Alan was our uh, Pied Piper. I mean, he was just an amazing mind. And Dan was an incredibly pro, incredible programming artist. I mean, he was just really, I mean, he was way more than uh, just a programmer. He was, he was an incredible realizer of Alan's ideas. And the rest of us were lucky to be around and got to play. Um, it was uh, it was quite an amazing unfolding. The first few years, especially, were just so exciting, um, but you know, intense. We worked long, long hours. I mean, we didn't. It didn't feel like work. I mean, you know, it, it was it was just so much fun that uh, you all you. You know, I mean, I, I came in in the middle of the night in order to get the the, the uh, character generator because that's when Duvall was was off, and that would be the only time I would I would get to have it, and I was very willing to do that. You know, to just come in and get it when I could, um, and that was kind of true with the early altos as well. Um, you know, everybody. I mean, it was it was a big deal when you got your own alto. <laughs> Um, um, so, um, let's see, I'm trying to, so anyway, that's kind of, you know, I sort of went from being a secretary there and, uh, then kind of looking like a programmer and then getting to be a programmer. So what, what, what was the first thing that you wrote, um, for the Alto or, or, or in Smalltalk? In Smalltalk? So that, uh, you know, the first, the, well, the first, the first thing I wrote in, uh, in Smalltalk was the code editor, uh, in the Smalltalk code editor, uh, which was a, I mean, it's really a, a text editor. Yeah. Uh, you know, it has more stuff behind it in order to control t some execution, but largely it was just, it was basically getting characters up on the screen and. Uh, in a in a readable sequence, um, and that that was um, you know that's one of the first things you have to do in order to have a computer is you have to be able to see what you're doing. So um, we um, so that it was I got to you know that was a, a big piece just to get that working. Um, and I, you know, that, that included, so then very soon after that, that included, um, you know, mouse location, you know, uh, following, you know, figuring out where the mouse was. Um, so, you know, putting on characters on the screen is, ha is, is a lot about, uh, you know, finding a position on, on in, a, in an XY, um, graph. Uh, I mean, the, sc the screen was like uh, we addressed it as as an as a. Um, there's there's got to be a mathematical way to say this, and I know I don't remember exactly how you do it. But when you have a a place where you the origin is x, you know, and it has an x origin and a y origin. What is that called? It's like graph paper, but you know, it's not. Right, Cartesian. Cartesian coordinates. That's it. Thank you. Um, uh, I, you know, I'm a theater major. I, <laughs> but I was, you know, I, I was good at it. I did, you know, we did, I got characters to, to go up. And one of the, one of the very important things that sort of uh, in the very early, so the very first part of when Alto first came up, the char the characters were put up on a oh, what the, it, it it was they had a special mechanism special hardware basically for getting the characters up that was line by line and uh so it wasn't really bitmap oriented it was so you 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 wrote the you wrote the characters into this special piece of memory and line by line, and then you would advance the line. 
And uh, I, that was the first thing I really did with the alto, was to get that working. And, um, and then, uh, but, but, we, but once the alto was there, we knew that we wanted to have, have, a, have the gra we wanted the graphics to be bitmap. Um, because they're, they're just the the uh, versatility, you know, the versatility. What you can do with a bitmap is awesome. I mean, to to this day, it's awesome. All, uh, you know, uh, a bitmap on in sort of two and a half dimensions in color is a lot more complicated than uh, uh, two dimensions on on a, on a black and white display. But it's kind of still the same thing. And um, uh, that all started from in that place. And that's, you know, from there you can do things. One of the things that I, I always thought was just incredible thing to realize was how much, this is, kind, this is really changing the subject kind of, but so, so early on, one of the things I had to learn was, you know, binary arithmetic, basically, and then octal arithmetic. And one of the things that just always blew me away was with only ones and zeros, you can imagine the world. You can imagine a Wikipedia. You can imagine an internet. Ones and zeros. All that meaning is down there in those switches, and it's just awesome to me that we, you know, we have we have enough wisdom to be able to put that together. And luck, I guess. I mean, I, you know, I think there's probably some luck in that as well. But um, so you know, it's it's kind of humbling, you know, when you look at your your uh, devices, um, all this down there are switches. And we are able to give it meaning. A very complicated, in you know, complex meaning. Um, and so even surprise ourselves with what we're able to, the meaning we're able to give it. But for anybody to think that something as complicated as an encyclopedia could come out of a collection of ones and zeros is a pretty big jump. I also used to think of it as light bulbs on and off. So uh, you mentioned, you know, um, working on the sort of the text drawing code, right? Um, yeah. So I remember, you know, I, I read Dan's BitBlitz article in Byte, and I think it mentioned that um, that it sort of BitBlitz was sort of a way to to unify your text drawing code with with other, you know, code those drawing other things like right. other graphics. So that your code was somewhat of a precursor to BitBlitz in some ways. I I actually. Uh... The initial bit of coding, actually, I did. Uh, you know, I did okay. with Dan's inspiration. I mean, I, I, I don't want to take any real credit for all of it, but I, I get a little credit for it. But uh, uh, so I actually wrote that code in, in the machine language. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, to begin with, so what this has so so let me let me give you let me give you I can give you a little uh, data I, I general get, machine language or or was it in the, uh, the yes the, the data machine yeah our okay. machine language no the the alto machine language was the data machine no okay. the general was right it was the same we in we incorporated their um, uh, um, instruction set instruction set right yeah. but then um, there was also the microcode. As well. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a little go here. Chuck Thacker wrote most of the microcode in the beginning. I, he and McCrite probably and some other people probably, but Thacker did a lot of it. And he wrote a piece of microcode code called Convert. Convert was uh, was a specialized 
um, uh, what a specialized uh, blip via it was you know block transfer algorithm, which basically you had memory that had a font in it, had the character had the bits of a font bit of a, a font. And you would the scan, the, the scan converter. I mean, convert would be, you would basically give convert the address of the of the font and the address that you wanted the address of the font, the address of the character, and the address that you wanted the character to go to. Mm -hmm. You know, like. So you the, you would calculate all those addresses and they ex, say execute more or less, say convert. Well, of course, I mean if you squint right, that's kind of a a a, a blip. I mean that's a kind of a bit blip, but the characters are all stored on word boundaries. Okay. Okay. Um, so so one of the and so. Biplet sort of came, uh, so so Biplet came up. I can I can tell you the story. We were walking down the hall one day, and we were talking about blitting stuff. You know, the block transfer was a lot of you did a lot of things with block transfer on the Alto, to, just to move stuff around. Lots of stuff on often on the screen, but not even always on the screen. Sometimes you wanted to move a block of code from say from memory to uh, a file buffer or from a file buffer to memory or those kinds of things. And so block transfer was kind of a, a common uh, data general routine. And we were walking down home from lunch one time and we were talking about it and, and uh, I'm going to take, as I say, you can frack tech me on all of this, but my recollection, we were walking down this hall and I said, what we, what we need is a bit blip from a bit boundary to a bit boundary instead of from a word boundary to a word, to a, a word boundary. So block transfer was a word boundary to a word boundary. What we needed was going from a bit, bit boundary to a bit boundary. So, I mean, what that came down to was being this bit in this word to this bit in this word. Okay? And then to generalize that, you say, starting at this bit, for this many bits, move it for, uh, to this bit. And this many bits was what was called the raster, the width. Um, does that kind of make sense a little bit? I think so, yeah. Um, uh, so, um, so we just, so we decided we would do that. And this, this was before it. So this, it was not in microcode in the beginning. It was in machine language. Um, and, um. And you, that's the part that you wrote. That was the part I wrote was the machine language part. Dan was the one who made it into machine code, uh, microcode, and that was much later. It was after. It wasn't. In, I don't think we made. We put Bitblit into microcode until we moved over to the park building, the other building across from Coyote. So we. Dan Dan writes that I think that didn't happen until Smalltalk seventy four. So it was yeah. at least nineteen seventy four. But so you're saying that this earlier machine coded version of Bitblit was when was that done? Well, before 1974, right? <laughs> you know, 73 uh, or yeah, but I, it was it was done pretty early uh, because we it ran on the machine code for a, a while, you know, for probably about a year at least. You know, I don't know the time back then. You know, trying to f remember. How much time passed is a little tricky, but because uh, um, it was—it's was funny. We, you know, we—it was—we never kind of worked on deadlines or 
I mean, we just did things as fast as we could do them, sort of, you know, and, uh, and working as hard as we did and playing as hard as we did. Um, and it didn't feel like there was this, I mean, eventually, as, as, as things got more, uh, uh, what's the word for, um, bureaucratic, as things got a little more bureaucratic, you know, Xerox wanted to know what they were getting for their money. Uh, it became trickier, but uh, in the very beginning, it was very, very much free range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's Bitlet. Um, I think Dan would agree with that, um, but but you might want to check. I'm, um, it's more like what it, more or less what it was about like. Um, but he was the one that did the microcode, and and that was transformative. I mean, that really that allowed us to do all kinds of graphics um, that we had only just kind of begin. That was much much harder to do until we had Bitlet, because um, you could basically do you know all the kinds of logical transformations, oring and XORing and reversing and you know just a million things that you could do as an operation as a Bitlet operation, and um, that was just. I mean, having that having that in microcode just made a huge amount of difference, and I, it also helped. And you can get more of this from uh, people like Ted and Dan. Uh, you know, it helped with uh, other parts of the uh, other areas of programming as well. Having that having that kind of functionality, that very handy capacity to move uh, arbitrary blocks of memory from one place to another. Which is what I mean. What Bitbullet is is basically moving arbitrary parts of memory from one place to another. That's and possibly doing a transformation on the way. Hmm. So was it the speed of the microcoder version yes. that was transformed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it made animation, for instance, uh, much more real. So to speak. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, could you talk about some other things that you worked on in Smalltalk? Well, okay. So, um, so I did. I did a lot of the, like overlapping windows. That was something that I, I was, I, I did a lot of the early implementation of that. I mean, I, I, all of this was really kind of under the tutelage of, of people who were much smarter than I, but I did, I did the, the grunt work, you know, I did the actual doing of it. Um, um, so I, we did that and we, uh, so that, that included like, you know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of graphics associated with like putting a, a browser together. You know, that's not that's different from putting a um, piece of uh, a, a piece of um, prose together on a on a page. You you need lists and you need scroll bars and the, all that kinds of mechanism was 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 part of what what. I did a lot of many pieces of that. Yeah, um, so this is the, the 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 hierarchical class browser that yeah the Larry Tesla came up with. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but we you know uh, we we had uh, um, we had you know we had we had text editing well before that, but we didn't have that particular browsing idea that was Larry's idea um, but you know we had all kinds of graphics that we would do uh, which was basically being a, so being taking a making a, 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 a brush out of a, 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 a circular collection of, uh, of bits and brushing it across the screen to make 
you know, gray and to make shapes, to grow, make a cookie monster, to, you know, to, um, uh, let's see, what else did we do? Uh, so I did that, then, uh, so I, that was, you know, I was kind of the, the text, the text person. Um, Flagel was kind of the graphics person. Other people were graphics people too, but I, but I was also part of that. Um, and, um, um, You know, other people were doing, you know, you know, trying to figure out how to do, I mean, figuring out how just to do small talk, how to do object-oriented programming. You know, that was all going on while I was kind of uh, playing around with all the, how it looked. Um, the, um, let's see. So... I I I built a lot of the uh, of the browsers uh, based on Larry's. I mean, I and I guess I would say I enhanced them because I think he actually built the first one. Um, um, and um, then uh, when when we when we decided to do Small Talk eighty. We decided, so up until that time, so I had always been still doing uh, machine code for um, um, so you still had needed machine code, you had to call Bitblet, you know, you had to, so you still needed machine code to basically get characters up and all that, you did call Bitblet, but you called it from machine code, you didn't call it you also we, th there was also a way of calling it from Smalltalk eventually, uh, but in the beginning, it was more like um, I mean the, the the routines that that allowed you to to put characters on the screen and allowed you to discover the where the mouse was, to move the cursor. Those were all uh, machine language routines, and I wrote many of those. Um, or some of those are, you know, a lot. Um, the um, the first uh, so the first small talk, really big small talk thing I did was the um, character scanners. So, so there's a whole set of small talk routines. Care, uh, called the dis composition scanner, the display scanner, and the character scanner. And the uh, composition scanner is for basically composing lines. So taking a, a line of textual material and making it into something you put on the display. So something that's stored as text, you take that text and you put it on, display it. And that, that was, so you compose it, and that's a print notion, sort of, you know, you, you have a compositor. Then um, you display it, and then you need to find, put a cursor in it. So that was what the character scanner was for. It was kind of marching through and measuring each one, you know, giving you back X, Y locations. And that was... Um, that was a pretty significant piece of the small talk uh, textual display code that probably is still in there to this day at some level. Um, certainly the last time I was around it, it was still around. Um, it was definitely in Squeak when first Squeak first came out because Squeak was I always sort of said Squeak was the real small talk, you know. It, uh, um, the um, so that and then the the other thing that I did that was um, sort of notable, I guess, is uh, the galley editor. Uh, 
So that was a, a big project. Uh, I guess. Could you kind explain of my, what a galley editor is? Yeah, I will. That was kind of my last hurrah. <laughs> um, so that, let's see, how can I explain this? So when you do publishing, one of the things often that you, is your first um, product is called a galley. You've heard the phrase, getting the galleys back. So when you're publishing a magazine, you often will get galley a print, basically rough prints of what's going to go into the magazine. And oftentimes, those galleys will be actually so uh, rudimentary that they're basically just arranged into, say, well, let's say you're putting together a magazine. So you might arrange the article for the magazine in this big long column of text, which when you actually paste up the magazine, you would paste in, in you would pay, you call pasting that up, and then you take off, you take an offset, you take a picture of that, and then you print it. That's kind of how publishing works. I mean, it's. That's slightly oversimplified, but that's about how it is. So when I called it a galley editor, I did that because I wanted to, it was, uh, it was an attempt at humility because it obviously wasn't uh, uh, a full-blown uh, text. Well, it ended up pretty much being a full-blown text graphics editor, a full-blown um, page gump page composition editor, but it was basically presented to the user as a long galley of paragraphs, just like Word, just like, it'd be pretty much like being in Word today. Uh, in fact, it was, uh, you know, the, the, the run codes that, oh, well, that was another thing we did that I, I didn't talk about very much. So, one of the things we did when we made, so, okay, so, so I did the scanners, but I also did the thing called the paragraph editor. That was very, very much I did that. That was also, Dan did a lot of that, but I also did a lot of that. And uh, so doing the paragraph editor meant you needed that. So you would, part of composition produced a thing called uh, text lines. So we were very object oriented in those days and we tried to make everything an object down to a character. You know, there's all, they were all objects. And um, so when you composed a group of characters, you would compose it into lines. That required measuring each character and uh, to a certain width, breaking, breaking the line, making the next line. And, and, and any time you say would delete something or add something, you had to recompose it. And there were ways to try to optimize that so that you didn't have to do the whole thing over, although in the beginning, you, that's what we did. Um, and, um, and that was a paragraph editor. And there was sort of, the, so then there was a thing called the paragraph, which was a collection of characters, basically with run codes eventually. Uh, this didn't all happen at once, but eventually there were run codes so that you could have, uh, you could make bold or italic or underline or superscript or subscript. Those are, that was all. So by run codes, you mean the specify this speci area to, spe to yeah, this area? Specify the font, bold. specify the, okay the bold, you know, all the stuff right. you see, you know, all, so that, we also did all that. I did a, much of that. Um, but the galley editor was an, sort of taking that one step further and basically being able to make collections of paragraphs and pictures, putting it all together and making a document out of it. So we could have called it a document editor, but I was, it was, it was, you know, it was the first cut. And so it was like, uh, I didn't want to 
didn't want to say, I, I didn't want to promise more than I could deliver. I think I kind of delivered more than I could promise, but I promised, but I mean, it turned out okay. It turned out pretty good, but um, yeah. that's, it was called the galley editor because of that notion of making galleys. Right. So today we would call it a page layout. I believe you would, yes, you would call it, uh, you would call it more like, it would, it's more like Quark, you know, than. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because it really did have uh, integrated uh, text and graphics and, and layout. Yeah. Um, and in the graphical, then, you know, one of the things that, worked out but you know getting graph getting text into the graphics you know so you wanted to put like you wanted to put a little label inside of a uh, inside of a um, uh, a piece of graph you know a graph a bitmap so you had to write a had to write code to, to figure out how to do that that was a, kind of a big deal uh, especially like making making uh, textual material that would go on an arc, you know, things like this, this, this is sort of relates a little bit to, uh, you remember Illustrator? Mm. And um, so, you know, following, following paths. Oh, okay. Curves, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, all of it seemed like we're just, we're just putting bits on the screen, folks. You know, and um, uh, I mean, put, one of the things that that I think is worth saying is that when I was doing all the character stuff, the model that I had for it was this is this this doesn't have to do uh, this doesn't really have to do with anything that means anything. This is just a, glyphs are just a bunch of little pictures that are put in an ordered that are put in an ordered way, and. Uh, that it was very useful to think about it that way because it it uh, it demystified it quite a bit. Um, um, you know, obviously, as I as I noted earlier, you know, you can look at it the other way that out of ones and zeros we can get all this incredible meaning. Uh, uh, and uh, and and I suppose you could even say dangerous meaning. Uh, <laughs> that's what people are saying today. Uh, um, so, you know, certainly when we were doing all this, we had no idea that uh, uh, people would get so excited about um, being able to see things quickly, but they are. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, that's what I, I, so I did that. that. Uh, uh, so, so the, the galley editor, editor was uh, uh, kind of the last big, big thing that, that I did before I uh, left Park. park. Um, um, the, you mentioned. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I that's it. On um, I didn't have any more to say really. Okay. Yeah. So before we move on, I, I just want you know. I think you mentioned. It, it seemed like you worked on a lot of the graphical user interface elements of Smalltalk. Yes. Like the browser and the overlapping windows and text yeah. drawing. Yeah. Could you just maybe speak more about like you know the the fact that like this sort of was a was a pretty new thing that you were doing, um, that you were you, you were the implementer of a lot of that. Yeah, well, um, so <laughs> uh, it's sort of one of these things. If I'm so smart, why well, ain't it rich? You know, uh, so it's sort of funny. You know, so Simone was doing all this stuff in uh, Simone and Lamson were doing Word basically, bit Bravo. Yeah. And um, and we were, and they were doing, so they, so one of the things about small talk is, is it, was that it was, it was always alive. It was always, you know, you were always in the middle of it, sort of. You were never, you were never sort of going off to a text editor, compiling and loading and, and executing, you know, you were you were always right there. It it was as as Butler pointed out that it was glacial in terms of sometimes the speed that it did it, but it was always interactive. Um, 
and immediate. And so making things that had that kind of uh, aliveness to it, uh, that um, consciousness to it, I, that, that, that's kind of a, a <laughs> maybe a little too much to say about it, but you know, there was a, there was a notion that you know, the, everything was available to you all the time. And, um, and I think small talk, that was, a, we succeeded pretty well in, in getting that feel and getting that, having that uh, experience for people. Um, I think that the, the value of that was somewhat uh, uh, lost, uh, that, 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 that aliveness, that uh, immediacy, uh, how beneficial that is in terms of how you think about uh, problem solving, how you solve something. If you have to wait for something to go through this big process before you see your result, if that, you know, if that, if you have that, if that's the way you have to do your mentation and do your thinking and do your planning, it's a very different feel than if you can kind of just incrementally put something together and see if it's working incrementally. Um, and so building all these things was like, it was like, um, I mean, it was sort of funny sometimes because, you know, we'd be building a browser and you were browsing in a browser that you were building the browser. And so <laughs> you could really, you could really screw yourself. I mean, you know, you could, uh, yeah. uh, it's very, sometimes they're very tricky and you want to be very careful. On the other hand, you know, allowed Dan to make these very incredible, you know, show these very incredible demos where he would change highlighting right in front of your very eyes, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, the... Uh, so, but it never... It ne so, one of the things that really sort of was interesting to me when I got out into the rest of the world was was people talked about applications. And we never talked about it. That was never a, a word that we used when I was at Park. Um, be, because we did, it was just, um, it was, it was just a, it was, it was just a piece of programming. It was just, so there was a, you know, there was a paragraph editor, there was a text editor, there was a, Graphic. There was animation. There was uh, chat. There, you know, there was email. There was all kinds of stuff. But it was just another window you went into and did some stuff. And uh, but it was all small talk. It was all if you wanted to change how it, how it looked or how it worked or or screw yourself, you could. You know, and uh, and it was you know it was so far. It was it went it it went down so far. To me, the, the, I, this was an incredibly important piece of small talk to me, was it, it, so when you have a, you know, edit, compile, load, run cycle, it's very different, the solution space is very different than if you can just type it in and run it. Um, um, and you can run it in very small increments. You know, you can see, is that did that work? It's little when when Dad made when Dan made that change. You know, that was like a teeny little change, but it had a dramatic effect. And um, and that's a very I mean, uh, uh, in the abstract, that's pretty large solution space. You know, that you can think about highlighting something. You know, em putting emphasis on something. Uh, and have a very powerful effect in a very short amount of, with a very short amount of uh, interaction. Um, and so you get to, for me, I always used to say that small talk, the, one of the main uh, things that was uh, really good about small talk is it increased the solution space, the kinds of problems you could imagine solving got bigger because you didn't have to worry about how it was going to execute. I don't know if that, I don't know if, I don't know if that, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that tracks or not, but um, it was very important to me. I, you know, 
So, so like, for instance, uh, I hated C++ because, you know, it just, you're over here and then, you know, it takes forever to get from over here to over here, you know, and uh, that just seemed wrong to me. Yeah. Just a different, it would be just a different way of thinking about it. Uh, and, you know, some of this, I think, has to do with what got to be called object-oriented programming and... And uh, you know that was that was certainly one of Alan's really important big ideas. Um, but we, you know, you know that was it was, I don't know that was a very big thing for me. Um, certainly made I mean made made it much easier for me to be a part of the whole uh, adventure because I didn't I didn't really have to be a mathematician or. Uh, um, I just had to be clever. Right. Well, um, I mean, I mean that that was part of the vision of small talk in the first place, right? Was that you know it allowed yes. anyone to be a programmer, right? And yes. and and for Alan to sort of promote you out of a secretarial position, yeah, into a programmer position was showed kind of what small talk was all about. Yep. Yep, that was certainly, uh, I certainly would agree with that. Uh, and, you know, that was one of the reasons you, why it needed to be readable, why you wanted to, to when, when somebody read the program, <coughs> it kind of made sense what it was doing. Um, you know, we weren't, we didn't succeed in all, every time we, in, in, all, of the, in all of the dimensions that, that one might think about that, but we succeeded in a lot of it. Um, at least I think so, and um, um, you know I think a lot of that's kind of been lost in the way we deal with computation now. But uh, I don't know what to say about that quite. You know, it, um, I don't know. It's like it seems sad to me. You know that uh, what 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 we've ended up kind of coming to with computation has uh, has had many kind of ill effects. Um, the other thing is yeah, that we've gotten so clever that you don't need programming anymore, really. I mean, you, we're getting so clever that we won't, you know, our, if our, if things keep going the way they are in artificial intelligence and, and in uh, the sophistication, uh, you'll simply say what you want and it will do it. Um, and thinking about how it's done will be kind of at a very high level. And maybe that's a good thing. I don't, you know, one can argue either way. Um, the um, certainly the um, a lot of the art that went into what we were what we were up to has um, I think been lost. Yeah, I mean Dan Dan is one of the most amazing. Uh, uh, creators of, uh, of computer product that I've ever seen, but he was, you know, in addition to being incredibly technically smart and and clever, he was also an artist. You know, he there was a there was a real there was feeling in what he did, and what and not and that was true for me too. You know, it's important that it feel it felt it felt cool, felt good. <laughs> I don't know if that I don't know if everybody in the group would share that with me, but I, that was certainly how I felt and how I felt about um, both Alan and Dan. I mean, they're they're in in addition to being incredibly. I mean, Alan's probably the brightest person I've ever known, uh, but he's also an incredibly um, has an, has an incredible aesthetic, very subtle aesthetic. 
Yeah. Um, you know, you've mentioned um, you know, several of the things that you worked on um, were kind of quasi collaborations with Dan. Could you talk about, um, you know, just collaborating with other members of the group and, you know, if you collaborate yeah. with other people as well? Um, let's see, let's see. So, you know, I worked with, I worked with Ted, but I'm trying to, I don't remember exactly what, I worked with Ted a little bit on, uh, on memory stuff, but it was mostly me kind of, uh, sitting there watching what Dan, what he was doing because I, I wasn't, he was way more clever about it than I was. But, you know, Ted ended up, he and Glenn Krasner did, um, several many, uh, I think several memory management things, but one of them was called, um, Loom, the larger object-oriented memory, which was, I think, is was pretty transformative. So for a long time, we were confined to this um, small amount of memory, and that was kind of all we had. And and a third of that, or half of that, was devoted to the display. So you know the what you could do in that amount of space was amazing, but was limited and. Uh, so getting getting a virtual memory to happen was a big deal. I didn't have much technically to do with that, but I certainly made use of it when it happened. Um, so who else did I, you know? I collaborated with. Uh, uh, so I I also wrote. Um, I forgot totally. I forgot about this. Uh, I wrote a. Um, uh, a character editor, uh, you know, uh, strike, uh, a font editor um, in Smalltalk. So we and we we also developed. The, so this is also actually something I I I kind of did was uh, the, what they call the strike font. So instead of ha instead of storing the fonts, uh, you know, uh, like a, a character per word, you basically store it just as uh, uh, a string of bits, and with a table that tell, told you how how wide each one was. So you could it was, so that you could, that's when we when we that that was that 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 was made sense when we got Bitblit working, you know. Right. So instead of go, having to put in word addresses and everything. You just said it's this. It's this. The, the character, you know, B is at this bit, C is at this bit, and it's this wide. Yeah. And 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 it, and it all starts, you know, at this uh, origin. And so they were called, you know. So one of the things that was nice about it is you could actually put it up on the screen and see all the characters. Mm. That, that's why it's what you know what a strike is. A strike when you when you to. When you see, uh, so you go to a print shop and you see okay. the characters printed out, all the characters of a font printed out, that's called the strike of a font. Oh, okay. And so the, so that was, we called it that because that was, it was related to that. Um, that was my creation. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, um, so I did a lot of stuff with um, Flagle. We we created you 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 remember the pictures of Smalltalk when it had this like lovely curvy font called it the uh, uh, cream font. Oh, I think so. It it's a little bit like the the Venice font on the Mac. Uh, it it sort like of these... looks like calligraphy. It almost looks yeah like, like, yeah right. All right. Okay, yes. I think I know that. Yeah. So. I, uh, Flagel and I did that. I made that was part of. I did made the font editor so we could make that font. Okay. Uh, and um, so I did a fair amount of stuff with Flagel on the graphics, doing bitmap stuff. You know, uh, paint like pro. You know, we had a paint like program, so you had you had brushes that, you know, which were basically. Little 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 bitmaps of different shapes that you could 
draw across the screen, you make pictures and and um, and illustrations of some sort or 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 for animations as well. I did do a uh, along the way went, uh, implemented the animation. What did I do that? How did I do that? I can't remember, but I did. So I, I, this is something I don't know. I can't remember. We had to we had to port animation from from something into the into our so be, before so animation ended up being mostly I think microcode, but there was an interim period where it was machine code, and I did part of that. Um, so you know, I had my fingers in a lot of stuff. I just did what I was able to do, what I could do, and what they would let me do, <laughs> and what they wanted me to do. And, you know, but there was always a, there was always plenty for everybody to do. It seemed like, yeah. Um, yeah. but it was never, you know, it was never, it was never all that formal. I mean, it was it got it got more that way later, but it it wasn't in the beginning. Uh, uh, let's um, let's see. Is there anything else? I'm trying to think of all the stuff. Well, you know, the important piece was we we played music. Um, we played softball. I mean, I I think I don't know. Was I the only? No, I wasn't the only person. I think Dave Robson also played softball. But um, so I had been a pretty good athlete when I was in high school. So. That played well. <laughs> Taylor liked that. Taylor, I could catch a football. That was good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it was it oh. was an amazing adventure. the The whole park adventure was just unbelievable. Um, yeah. Oh, one one thing I I, I remembered. Um, so the, I know there was there was that things kids do video with the the kids in the lab and i think you're the narrator on that yes, video i am the narrator i because i sort of said look i'm a theater major i get to do the narration <laughs> 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 that's how that happened it was i i sort of put my foot down and said i should do this so yeah so i did that but, uh, Adele did did all the script writing and everything, but yeah, <laughs> it's my dulcet um, tones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you mentioned the the galley editor was was your last hurrah. That was the so that was the last thing you wrote um, as part of the group. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, you know, I I left Park sort of right before uh, Park Place, uh, Park uh, Park Place. Yeah, what the, was sp the spin out? Yeah, the business was it called? Right. What was it called? Park Place was it? Yeah, it was called. It was called Park Place. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that was uh, in the eighties. Uh, that was eighty. Yeah, eighty six. I was there until eighty six. Okay. Wow, that's quite a while. A lot yeah, of was the other was 15 had years. Left. I was there 15 yeah. years, a little over 15 years. And, um, and then I was sort of bereft for a while. And then I, um, I, uh, met Carol, my, my, my spouse, which was even more incredible than Park. And, um, and we came back to New York, where I went to work for J.P. Morgan. Mm, okay. Had a whole nother incredible adventure, adventure uh, making a program called Capital. It's when small talk. So we all thought that small talk was for children, and it's probably regrettable that it didn't stay that way. But um, it became very useful for programming uh, financial things as yeah. well yeah so so I, put, I did a lot of the uh, graphics for um 
this program at J.P. Morgan called Capital. So you met Carol in uh, what year? I met her in um, 86, November of 86. We've been together over 35 years. It's unbelievable. It's so unbelievable to me that all of this happened over 35 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> And it, you know, it was a huge piece of, of my life. You know, the you know I was, but you know, it was also 15 years of my life. You know, um, yeah. um, and you know, the J.P. Morgan experience was uh, like 12 more years of my life. So, right, yeah, I've been a small talk gunslinger for a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So w was it? So it was. How, how did that whole um, Morgan thing happen? So wait, you, you had been in California. Um, how did you end up finding that position okay. at Morgan? Okay, so here's, um, here's... And moving to New York. Here's how that happened. So I had... I was away. I was sort of out of park, and um, I met Carol. Carol was uh, the friend of... Uh, a friend of mine... Actually, uh, a friend, yeah. I was part of a women's group that, that uh, Adria was a part of, and this friend was also a part of, and Carol was a friend of hers. And they invited me over to meet her when she was out from California. And Was this was, a professional women's group? Like No, no, no. It was a... Uh, it was or just a, more of a social a, group? Uh, yeah, you know consciousness raising group i don't know you know you know you know how we used to have you know how we used to have uh, what did we call them when we would uh get together and i don't know you know uh you know talk about how terrible everybody was and how hard it was and you know i don't know it was kind of a righteous thing but in any event they you know it was our women's group and uh and we were thought we were pretty cool stuff. Um, and anyway, uh, so I met, so Carol was this friend that they had gone to college together. She was out visiting. And I went over and to, to, to meet her. And it was like just an instant connection. And I had never, I, I was not particularly lesbian or anything, you know, that was, that's not particularly an important piece of our relationship. Uh, I mean, it obviously is a reality, but uh, it's not the nature of it, really. And um, did, is that something that you discovered at the time, or did, yeah, was that something kind of you've known much. about your? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. I. Well. No. No. I mean, we disconnected as people, as beings, as human beings, and so it was a mad love affair. And uh, so I, you know, we, she moved out pretty quickly to, to, to live with me out there. I was living in, still living in Palo Alto. And uh, um, eventually I had to find work. And so I got a job at Apple. Oh, okay. Uh, testing... Uh, Doing testing on their small talk. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the one of the first. The, so remember, I told you that it was pretty horrible when I went to work and was a, being a secretary and typing papers for the physicists and the uh, optical scientists. Uh, when I went to work at Apple, one of the first things I had to do is uh, read the, uh, the that huge. Manual. Do you remember that? It was basically all the, all the um, routines, all the all the machine language routines. Oh, inside yeah. Macintosh. Is yeah, that yeah, what? yeah. It's okay. Unbelievable. It was an unbelievable, <laughs> <laughs> horrible thing to do to a person. Anyway, I did that, and I, but I was mainly there for because they had this version of Apple. So Apple had a version of Smalltalk which was one of the experimental versions that got out when we when we released Smalltalk 80. Right. Apple got one 
uh, I think DEC got one. Texas Instruments. Tektronix. Uh, Tektronix got one. Yeah. Um, HP had. HP, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think they did. Um, anyway, so the, 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 I was there, I went to, to, to Apple to sort of, uh, be, uh, to do some testing on that. Okay. And that's how I got to Apple. And so I eventually ended up working, um, uh, in their research lab, uh, working on, um, oh, what was it called? We were trying. You know, we were doing stuff, working with uh, Roger Sathoris, uh, You know, working on, um, well, basically, kind of trying to understand. How, you know, how do you understand language? And one way you can think about understanding language is going through uh, a thesaurus. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the thesaurus is a collection of of words that have similar meanings. And um, so that was kind of the, the idea behind it. I did that for a while, and um, eventually, um, uh, we wanted to we wanted to move from Palo Alto to San Francisco. So I got a job with uh, American Airlines of all places. Uh, where they had a re they had a research group in uh, in the city, and I and they had they were using Smalltalk, uh, using the Smalltalk uh, from uh, that uh, Park Place was selling, so you know that was right up my alley. And so um, I ended up writing a uh, a program basically a draw like program uh which would uh display um what do they call the uh the diagrams that you make for relational databases oh Relation, relational diagrams you know the yeah you've seen pictures of all you know yeah. lots, of, lots of arrows and pointers and thingies like that entity something yeah entity entity yes that's right entity something real entity something relationship something anyway it was a lot like draw you know it's a lot like mcdraw basically yeah and i did a i did a big a big program in small talk for for american airlines that group got acquired by teradata and teradata eventually got acquired by NCR and they wanted me to move to Cleveland. I didn't want to move to Cleveland. So that <laughs> that was the end of that, but that was about I think a couple of years. And that was interesting, you know, I learned a, I learned a lot um and um But then I was out of work because I didn't want to move to Cleveland. And so I got this. So I was looking, I was looking for something and I, um, this recruiter called me and wa wanted uh, to know if I would be interested in going to New York um, where, um, uh, where they were doing uh, financial programming in small talk. And they needed small talkers, and uh, I, I said, "Well, gee, I don't know." But then they 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 were offering obscene amounts of money at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so what year was we, that? This was. So let's think about this. When was that? That must be. Oh yeah, ninety ninety one. I think was ninety one. Was when I came okay. out here. Ninety one, ninety one. I'm pretty sure it was ninety one. Um, and um, I um. So J P Morgan, I uh, had an interview with a guy by the name of Derek Penn, who is an incredibly clever fellow, and uh, a finance person. And uh, they were they were going to build this uh, 
financial programming tool uh, in Smalltalk, using Smalltalk. And this was on Next Machines at the time. Can you imagine? Oh, really? Yeah. Next, Next Machines were very cool. Um, th th that fell through. We eventually ended up uh, on um, Sun Machines using Unix, but it, we all loved the Next Machines. Um, um, and I, that was, then we built this big financial uh, trading program called Cap, and we pulling, we were, we were, we were, this was also another kind of, uh, you know, hotshot group, skunk works kind of group. And uh, so we ended up making this program. And uh, when it came time to start having people use it, uh, we didn't, we, they wanted to know what to call it. And being J.P. Morgan, we thought it would be a great joke if we called it Capital. <laughs> <laughs> and the way you would launch it on, on Unix was with DOS, DOS Capital. <laughs> and, so it's and Capital it was a great, with a K. With a K. The, the German with a K. spelling. And in, yeah, the very, okay. in the very, very beginning, <laughs> it had a, uh, it, uh, one of the, the picture that came up was uh, of Karl Marx. We... Uh, we, that didn't last long, but uh, we did do that. That was that was a lot of fun, and Der Derek Penn was an incredibly clever uh, fellow. He was the one who ran the group. So I went out there with Axel Kramer, and I were went out kind of together. I got to know Axel while I was in uh, San Francisco, and uh, so I did a lot of the graphics for uh, for the uh, for Capital. Uh, and I, I, one of the things, the reason I mentioned that, that came to mind was, you, do you remember Hot Draw, where, which was another kind of relational mechanism where you draw uh, lines between objects? Maybe you don't remember that, but anyway, there was a thing called Hot Draw. I, I built a thing called Blob Draw, which was uh, basically you take an object. And drop it on this, uh, drop it in, in the screen. It builds a little uh, graphic, a little, a little uh, basically list of the variables in that object. And uh, then you can take another object and drop it on the screen. And if there's a relationship between those two objects, it'll draw lines between the pointers in the uh, in the object. Uh, so it was a way of visualizing uh, programming um, issues. Um, and Capital was very, made J.P. Morgan lots and lots of money. Um, and I was there I'm surprised for, they kept the name. Yeah, they, you know, they, they, they played along, you know. They kind of they kind of had to agree. I mean, they they didn't they didn't play along very much with the Marx product part of it, but you know they they are capitalists, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, uh, all of all of our, our all of our machines when in the group when we first went out there, all of our machines were named after dead white philosopher, dead white male philosopher. So, so my machine was uh, Mills and. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, we so you know we had a lot of fun. It was a, it was a, it was, it was a lighthearted adventure. And that was that again, like Park, sort of went for about five years, as a lot of lightheartedness, and then it sort of they started to use it. They started to actually make a lot of money on it, and then it became pretty serious. You know, because because it became the, uh, it became the, uh, uh, sort of uh, program of record. And when that happens, then, you know, lots of, then it becomes cement. Right. Um, so that became their main trading um, yeah, application? Yeah, I think maybe for, even to this day trading. it is. Uh -huh. Wow. Um, so I've had my fingers in amazing things. Not bad for a kid from Iowa with a uh, degree in theater, huh? 
<laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so you were with Morgan from 91 to 91 to uh, 2001, just before, 2001. just before the um, plane flew into the World Trade Town Center. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was, I had just gone from there. I like, uh, I've been, away, I've been out of uh, JP Morgan for, I think, a month when that happened. And that was where that, so the World Trade Center is where the PATH train came in. So I could well have been caught in that. It was, I was very, wow. you know, it was, it was, I was, I was not happy about uh, getting run out of, uh, out of JP Morgan, but I was very happy that I wasn't in that. Okay, that sounds like another unpleasant experience. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't terribly pleasant. Uh, I seem to have a capacity for basically um, all the people that uh, who who I who have supported me. They are all very successful, and then they move away, and I'm left there mm. all by myself, and that's not uh, that's not a very good. I see. So it's sort of like, you know, the you had patrons that got you in the door and as long as they were there, you were fine. Yeah. But as soon as and, they and, left... and it was I mean, it was it was I mean, it was it, it, it wasn't like it was a, a charity. I mean, we did pretty incredible things together. Yeah. But they they they. I don't I don't have I don't think I have the kind of necessary ambition uh to uh, pursue a uh, career in that way. Right. It's, career has always been an interesting thing for me because, you know, it never felt like career to me. It was, it was, uh, I don't know, it was, I mean, the people were really, have always been a hugely important piece of my work life. Yeah. Did did you ever experience any discrimination, gender discrimination, or no. over no? Or and I, 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 uh, uh, no, I didn't, and especially at Park, I never did at all, not in the slightest. And that that's always been something I've 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 cherished, and you know I feel very lucky about. Uh, but that was never an issue. That's good. Um, and really, it's never been an issue for me. That's never been the problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I you know, I, I part of it is I think I kind of have a personality that just wants to get the job done and you know wants to get along and doesn't. So I mean that that's part of a problem. I mean you know, if 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 you're sort of working together and trying to get a job done what your status is is not the big piece you know it's getting the job done sometimes you just you go get the coffee and sometimes you write the big algorithm you know i mean but you do all of that you you go off to rosati's and have some beer and you uh spend all night working on the character scanner you know i mean those are those all kind of go together in my my way of working yeah hmm. um you know I, I do find it interesting that you know maybe your experience uh among members of the learning research group is unique because you then went into the the industry where small talk was actually being used and became yeah. part of that world and i i think that's a very unique experience and i was wondering is that really talk well, I think no, so. Uh, well, it? let's see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it is kind of, I guess. I mean, I think Dan has done some, uh, although mostly research, I guess. <coughs> um, but yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Glenn went off to, to uh, he was at Park Place. That's Dave true, Robson yeah. St stayed at Park. Um Adele, I don't. Adele sort of went off and did highfalutin stuff. Um, yeah, I guess you're right. 
Well, you know, when you're a kid from Iowa and you need a job, you go and find a job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it was, it's, yeah. you know. It's, but you got to see how small dog was actually being used on the ground by customers. Yeah. Oh, like, you bet. You bet. <laughs> you bet I did. And, um, and um, you know, I, I mean, it's a great tribute to small talk that it was incredibly, it's an incredibly powerful solution space. I would say that still, you know, if you're going to do right programs to cause effects, that is an incredible environment to do it in. There are a few others that are derivative from that. Self became very powerful, I believe, as a solution space. But... You know, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, uh, uh, what's the word when you're partisan to something? Mm, biased uh, or biased, but uh, you know, I'm not partial uh, to. Yeah, I'm, but I, but you know, I still, I, I do feel that. Uh, you know, I feel the whole, the whole sort of. Um, object-oriented paradigm behind the classification paradigm in, in small talk was very uh, compelling to me. This was a, this was a time the, a new age time. So the root object in small talk is nil. And that's very, and that's very uh, kind of Buddhist, you know, out of nothing comes something. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was very taken by that. Yeah. Could you could you speak to um you know small talk's place in I mean uh, sort of small talk's importance within the financial industry and and why it became so important there. Um Well, okay. I'll hum a few bars about that if I can. Um, so when I went to when I went to J.P. Morgan, I thought we were going to make programmers out of traders. I thought we were going to teach them all to be programmers. That's what I thought. I was very wrong, but that's what I thought. Because my whole goal or my whole idea behind small talk is that you were teaching people how to be programmers, how to manipulate the machines. Um, uh, it turns out that, I guess, you know, we aren't so interested in being able to manipulate the machines. We want the machines to just, I don't know, do what we want them to do. I don't know what how to put it. Um, but uh, if if you're not kind of grabbed by the by by programming, I guess it's just not attractive. One of the things that was really interesting at J.P. Morgan was you just couldn't get the um, one of the things we implemented, by the way, in in small talk uh, in uh, Capital was a, a spreadsheet program called we called it uh, uh, Capital One Two Three. Remember? Okay. Yeah, Lotus, Lotus after yeah. Lotus. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the traders were just rooted in their spreadsheets and they just would not give up that way of thinking about things. And, um, you know, obviously spreadsheets are an incredibly powerful way to think about things. No, There's no question about that, but there's other ways to think about it that... Uh, are equally powerful, but it was just, it just, so that was one thing. The, the other thing, the other reason that we couldn't make programmers out of traders is that because it's for legal reasons. You can't have, you have to be able to make things hard to change in the, uh, in the, uh, in the financial world, believe it or not. Um, because the, the temptation for, 
malevolence is just too high. Uh. And um, so that's a big piece of it, actually, is that you don't... You, so, you know, one of the things about small talks is it's really easy to change and fix. Right. But that's not a good thing if you're down on the floor and you're and you've you've uh, you can change the price of something uh, uh, just by typing in the you know going in and changing a little piece of code. Right. So so that became and I I think I think that that really is what was the the reason that it couldn't become like the tool. I mean, it became a it became a, a a huge financial application, but you know, mm. but it you, it we it couldn't. You know, in the beginning, before before it got out on the floor, we did all kinds of things. You know, the the thing, the blob draw thing I was talking about, and you know, all kinds of graphical uh, uh, browsers and you know different uh, graphical effects. But and you know you could you could break in anywhere and change anything at any time, and uh, that was great while we were developing, but it was kind of not okay once you started having something of record. And you can I mean I can see the issue. I just I I don't have a good solution to it. I think it's sort of sad, but I don't you know you you know people have to have to feel confident in their uh, uh, in the re re records that are being kept. I mean, that's kind of one of the big things behind uh, uh, the BitChain technology, I believe, is that... Oh, blockchain. Block, yeah. I'm sorry, blockchain, yeah. Uh, that, you know, you can, you can, you can have, well, I mean, t to some extent, it allows you to do record keeping uh, that's not audited, but I mean, that's sort of a, a front and a back to that, but um, I must be getting very boring to you. <laughs> no, no, this is all great stuff. I'm just, I'm, this is fascinating. I'm, um, you know, I, 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 cause so I, I'm really curious as to like, you know, why small talk was, was so, um, you know, why did J.P. Morgan choose Smalltalk in the first place? Because they could have used any other language, yes. right? Like, why yes. Smalltalk? Like, what is the selling well, point of Smalltalk for Wall Street? Trying to think of how... Well, Smalltalk was sort of the, um, for a while, was the creme de la creme of object-oriented programming. Right. And, you know, it got that cachet, and uh, it captured, uh, captured the imagination of... Uh, I don't know where else it got it, where, where besides J.P. Morgan it got. I think it did get other places. It got one other place that it got very big. I actually worked a, a little while at a place like uh, that was uh, a container management, managing uh, container uh, schedules and uh, lading. You know, all kinds of lading uh, issues. Oh, you mean shipping containers? Shipping, uh huh. Shipping containers. Okay. Was, I've forgotten the name of the uh, company that uh, that had a very large program managing their um, traffic. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, it, from my perspective, it's just this incredible solution sma space. You know, why wouldn't you do it that way? Uh, but, you know. Right. Uh, but, so you mentioned it's because it was object oriented. And then you earlier had mentioned that J.P. Morgan had had acquired Next Machines, which was also an object-oriented system. Exactly. Yes. So, what was it specifically about object-oriented programming that you know okay, Wall Street firms I, well, were okay. interested in? So, you you should ask ask smarter people than I, but I'll give you my I'll give you my uh, my eight bars on it. Uh, so, I think object-oriented programming is 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 
attractive because it's a great way to think about the world, about how the world works. I mean, it seems very close to how we think about things. Things and objects are kind of synonyms. synonyms. Um, so in terms of modeling the world, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And um and the 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 um so so you know that small talk ha was uh, heavily influenced by simula. Yeah. Probably. Um and um so what is it that makes you know m much of our science is uses the kind of classification. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess object oriented, uh, you know, a piece of object oriented is the objects, but a piece of the small talk environment is the, is the notion of classification. Mm -hmm. um, um, where the, the, the hierarchy, the class hierarchy, the class hierarchy, and the, yeah. the, the, the way of organizing uh, knowledge and, and uh, solutions into those kinds of hierarchies. And so, you know, classes, classes are a way of, of defining, of, of describing objects. I mean, that's true in the biological world as well. Um, so the biological world has this very uh, hierarchical arrangement. I mean, it, whether it's literally hierarchical or not, I mean, we could argue about, I suppose, but we've, we've, dis we've, we've determined that that's how we're going to organize that knowledge, that, that um, how we're going to uh, organize thinking about the natural world. So it seems like objects feel natural um, in a way that... Um, And that just captures people's minds. It captures people's interest. You know, even even things like uh, you know, I don't I don't know very much about these things, but I mean, I think even things like um, Python and uh, you know some of these other what I would call lesser <laughs> environments sort of act like they're kind of, they're kind of object oriented. Just. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think they're much less rich in in their in their capacity, uh, but they're sort of much. They're often free. I guess that has something to do with it. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure why small talk. I I still am puzzled by why uh, small talk didn't become more pervasive. Mm -hmm. I think. I mean, part of it. Part of it, I think, has to do with. Uh, the fact that it it, it became it, it wasn't free, and um, and um, you know, in many many ways, if something's free, it's very it's very hard to break break that nut. Um, yeah, it's not something you know that I'm. I mean, I certainly don't have any great insights about that. I don't think. You know, I don't think the world probably can work if everything's free, but I'm I'm not sure I know how to make it work when everything costs something either. Right. Well, I, I'm, I guess I'm curious then, like, um, you know, I would guess around the time that you left um, was probably around the time that a lot of small talk in finance was beginning to be replaced by Java. Is that something that you were witnessing? Yes. And it, you know what? Java was free. Right. And everybody and everybody thought that it was object oriented and it sort of is, but it's not, you know, it's much harder to use than small talk. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, you know, that's my opinion, but yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, you know, I, when, 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 when people started showing me Java, I said, well, why would you ever want to do that? You know, I mean, that's just, that's just backward. And, um, but it was free, you know, 
I mean, I think one of the things, this is a story you have to get from somebody else probably, but you know, one of the stories is, is that the sun came within an eyelash of using small talk instead of Java, and the world might be a different place if it had that happened, but uh, uh, it wasn't free. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you mentioned you also worked for that container company. Were there any other um, Wall Street firms that you worked for? Yeah, not Wall Street. I worked for Chubb, the insurance company, uh, for a couple years. Actually, a couple times, a couple years at a time. Uh, Chubb is a sort of a uh, you know insurance for rich people uh company they had the so their their main uh um, support place was out in the middle of nowhere in new jersey when i went out to interview i said you guys i mean, it literally was out in the middle of a field basically <laughs> but and they had the small they had the small the small talk i liked the least which was uh um, instantiation of small talk. You know, it's okay, but it's just, it's not the small talk I made. Um, so I, I did that for a while. That, they also had a big, a very a significant uh, small talk implementation. And that's another business application that was big. Mm. Um, I've forgotten the name of they had a name for the for the program that ran. I'm pretty sure they still use that as well. Yeah. Uh but um and I'm not you know, so um so I don't know what other places have you know, there are a couple places that have, you know, had great success with it. Um but it just wasn't didn't capture the imagination as much as I would have thought. And then Dan, you know, went off and uh, basically did, what did he call it? Uh, something script. Um, uh, oh, well, he did, he uh, well, he worked on Squeak for a while, and then... Uh, yeah, he worked on Squeak, but that was small talk. But uh, yeah. then... Oh, you then mean he Lively? Did, he did some script that was called... I want to say JavaScript, but I don't think... Yeah, he, he did Lively in JavaScript, yeah. Yes, Lively. And that was kind of small talk like, I think. I, I, I never had any much contact with it at all, but. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I never. So I don't I don't know the secret to, I, you know, I would like to I would like to understand why it is that it didn't take off. But, um, you know, it's. Um, So, so it's an interesting sort of to talk about the the feeling at Park was an amazing feeling um, of um, camaraderie and openness and uh, very little hierarchy, and that was an incredibly powerful experience, but it was not sustainable. And I'm not sure I understand why that is true. I mean, I think among other things, it's, it's not income producing, but I'm not sure that's the whole story. There's just something about that kind of energy that doesn't sustain. I feel sad about that, but it seems like that's what happens. I mean, somewhat similar thing happened at Cap in uh, at J.P. Morgan. You know, we had this incredible group and made this incredible tool. You know, but then it, be it then it became very bureaucratized and um, it lost its uh, it lost its pizzazz. Mm. My phrase was it it turned it into cement. You know. Right. You, you made you, you made this great edifice, and then the cement dried, and you didn't dare change anything, you know. And that was that's right. just not small talk. Yeah, yeah. 
you so you mentioned that you've worked in a number of, of the different commercial small talks. Could you maybe um, compare and contrast your experience with those? Sure. Um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the only real small talk was Squeak. Right. I never I never actually worked in Squeak. Um, I, I mean, that's somewhat of a lighthearted thing. So this, I mean, the small talk that I did the most important commercial work I did Capitol in was the the Syncom small talk. Okay. And I and I I consider that far superior to any other small talk. Uh, any commercial one, you mean? Any commercial small yeah. talk. I mean, the only other one I know is instantiations. Is there another one? Um, I don't. I'm not that aware of. I think there may uh, have been one one in Europe somewhere that I've forgotten the name of, but. Is but gemstone that, you know, one? What? Is gemstone one? Well, yes, gemstone. Well, gemstone is is certainly small talk eighty derivative. Um, I mean, uh, the the instantiation small talk is just barely, it's not really even small talk eighty derivative. Um, it's really just a different implementation. It's Dave Thomas's idea about what small talk is. And you know it's it's familiar, but it's different. I see. Um, so 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 Simcom is Simcom is so like okay so I'm so I think Park Place merged with Digitalk, and then that IP is now owned by Simcom. Is that correct? No. Did did Simcom no. merge with Digitalk? Is that? Uh, I guess you're right. No. Is that so? Right? So so Park Digitalk Place was and, another small talk. You're right. So Digitalk and, I, and Digitalk and Park Place did they merge? I don't think so, but I, I could be wrong about that. I think um, I don't think so. I could be wrong about that. I you know I I lost I lost touch basically after because I after, think Simcom now owns what was Digitalk. Okay, I'll I'll accept yeah. that. I don't really know. Um, uh, I haven't seen you know I so it's been like what. Damn near fifteen years, probably since I've seen a small talk. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not, you know, I don't really know anymore where where things sit. Um, I mean, the last small talk I was around was the Chubb small talk, which was the instantiations version. Okay, and that was how long ago was that? Uh, so I was I I'm. I left there when I was in, when I was seventy five. I'm eighty three, so that was what? Uh, so eight, eight years, years ago. ago uh, twenty twenty fourteen. Yeah, twenty fourteen. That's about right. Maybe twenty fifteen. Okay. Um, so that's so that's when you retired. Yeah. Or okay. Yeah, I mean, I uh, uh, ba basically. Uh, Chubb was basically moving all their, almost all of their um, small talk implementation uh, to India. Mm. And uh, so uh, they, they, they just stopped hiring Americans. Right. And so uh, finally I dropped off the cliff. Right. Um, I don't. I. 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 I, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I don't think career planning is probably one of my strong suits. <laughs> but I worked a long time. Yeah. I. I had a paper out when I was three years. When I was in third grade. So from third grade until I was seventy-five. That's pretty good. Pretty good that's run. Pretty good. Yeah. And you were doing for mo all your entire career after Park. You were always writing in small talk or some variant, something yes. derived from. I was it. always yes. Okay. Uh, wow. Yes. That's still pretty good. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. I, I've had an amazing run. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Don't want to uh, denigrate that at all. Um. You mentioned, I think you said you were a small talk gunslinger. Did that mean that you're mostly a contractor or were you ever a formal employee? Uh, you know, that's like, that's a funny thing. And I was always a contractor. Okay. 
So when I came out to, uh, when we came back to, from, so how we got from California to New York was I, you know, I went to work for Cap for uh, J.P. Morgan. We thought it was going to be six months. It ended up being 10 years. So, wow. um, but I was contracted the whole time. Um, and most of the people who uh, did the capital implementation were, were contractors. They weren't J.P. Morgan employees. Um, I mean, you're not a you're not a, you're not financial, right? You don't, you don't have your MBA, you know? Right. How can you possibly be J.P. Morgan? Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. I, I'm sort of teasing, but you know, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, they certainly the pay was good. Um, um, so one of the reasons we ended up staying here is because Carol's people are all here. Uh, and I, family. And her family, yeah. Yeah. And I, do, I have very little family left back in uh, the mid, you know, back in, or, or, you know, or in California even. But, you know, I mean, all, you know, all, but all of Carol's, you know, she grew up in Washington. She has all kinds of people in New York. Family is here, and it just it just made sense for us to be here, right? And that's kind of how we why we ended up being here as opposed to. I mean, I loved Palo Alto. I thought you know that was I thought that's where I would make my grave. But uh, thank God I met Carol because that that has been the, uh, the that has been really the most amazing miracle in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, that's all I did. I I I did. We did small talk eighty, and uh, then I I you know I did I did the the work at Apple, and then um, uh, at uh, so even at Apple you were a contractor, or yes. were you an employee? Okay. Yes. So did did you Actually, ever when I when I when I I did get an offer from Apple uh, when I uh, when we moved from uh, Palo Alto to San Francisco, but uh, we decided to take the the um, the uh, ter you know the airlines offer. Right. Okay. Um, I well actually I wanted to ask him, did you uh, did you ever end up working uh, or or working or, or and um, you know, running running into your old you know park uh, friends, you know, at Apple, like because I you know Dan had been there at first. Uh, well, time and okay. Was so when I when I was at Apple, uh, so they were all they were all by that time uh, down in uh, by the Vivarium. Oh. Doing squeak, mm -hmm. or right? Doing, you know, um, yeah. And uh, so I didn't uh, didn't have any intersection. I so the, who was I? Cunningham. Uh, what was his? You remember Ward Cunningham? You remember that name? I don't. Know. Yes. Or yes. Kent Beck. Yes. Yes. These. Yeah. Yeah. These agile folks. Uh, so yeah. Kent. Uh, Kent. I think both Kent and Ward were at Apple working on uh, the Apple small talk when I was there. Okay. Um, we didn't have that much interaction. Um, I had some interaction with Kent later at when he, at, we hired him to do part of the um, Capital 123 implementation in, in Capital. Um, and I, I, I had, I, I'm trying to remember. I had a little interaction with Ward, but I don't remember exactly what the circumstances were. He was a pretty incredible fellow. He, he, he did the you know, all the wiki stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've interviewed him about that. Yeah, yeah. He's a cool guy. Do, do you have any? Oh, have you interviewed was, Kent at all? No, not yet. 
I'm, I don't haven't heard about him for a long time. I wonder where I just curious how he ended up. Yeah. I was wondering, like, do you do you, um, you know, both of them went on to to develop, you know, this the agile methodology, which, you yeah. know, um, is kind of inspired by small talk in some ways. Is, yeah. it, is that anything you can speak to? Yeah, it's a cool idea. <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess you've yeah, been doing I mean, small I, talk I, you know, all the I time, think, so you know, I, I, you're I, already you know, doing it. You know, Kent was very good at uh, uh, capitalizing on um, um, the, you know, the, the, um, what I would, I get, I don't know, you call it, you know, the, the gestalt of, of, of the small talk idea of, of, you know, so what I was talking about earlier, uh, being able to change things immediately and, uh, you know, yeah. being able to interact, you know, that's, that's very, very similar to what one might, you, one might talk about that in, uh, in the terms that the agile uh, programming ideas they sort of fall into that same kind of feeling of uh you know of lack of lack of um what would you call it sort of lack of lack of formalism more uh more intuition and more um you know less hierarchy i i mean i'm i don't know i'm not uh, deeply familiar with the agile stuff but it's kind of like that isn't it am i yes yeah, so the more right? experimentation I, less planning yeah, more experimentation yeah. you know fewer fewer meetings lots of standing right. up <laughs> right <laughs> i'm teasing yeah right? um <laughs> i used to tease alan alan is so, so you know, a, a very common thing in programming is to draw a box, and uh, uh, you know, make you know, make make a, like a box with a lines through it, list like a list, and then draw an arrow to another box with a bunch of things in it. And that was that was Alan's. Uh, I, I you know, I would always tease that if Alan was going to come explain to us, explain something to us, I could basically go up to the whiteboard and draw some boxes and arrows and he would just fill in the, uh, the content. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was just, you know, th that was just his canonical way of communicating about stuff. It was funny. I don't know, I used to say that you, uh, if you couldn't get something on one page, uh, it wasn't worth, it wasn't worth its salt. Right. And he, he must've told you that too. Right? Yeah. Well, the yeah. motivation behind the bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Alan, he mentioned that uh, years later, he was asked to consult on Capital after the original developers yeah. were no longer there. So that was probably after your time there as well. Well, I actually saw him come uh, a, a couple of times when he came to consult. Mm. He and, you know, they invited me to to come be there while he was there but he was mm. you no know, he was he was consulting uh, uh you know as alan does you know at a very high level um, right <laughs> <laughs> and he does it extremely well right yeah but i but so i did see some you know i did see some of that interaction I remember I also got to see Alan's um, one of the early demos of the um, uh, what's the program that he did with uh, Dave Smith and um, oh, some other guy, a virtual uh, spaces. Do you you know about that? You must know about that. I'm not sure what's, actually. What's the name? It's very much like a, it's like a metaverse. It's not like you know. It's like uh, you oh. have avatars and. Um, oh, when was this? Oh, I've never this heard is of this. probably ten. This is probably ten years ago, maybe. Okay. Maybe longer even. What was the name huh. of that? It had a name, but I can't remember it. Anyway, you know he's. 
Always, it was when he left the group. That was that was really really hard at Park. Mm -hmm. That was there was a, some significant subset of us were pretty bereft. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm glad he did. I mean, he's you know he's had in, impact in many many. He's yeah, he has impact no matter what he does. He's just quite amazing fellow, but yeah. Um, Earlier, you um, so you made that joke about you know not being an MBA at J.P. Morgan. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if like not having a PhD at Park was a similar thing well so when i got so one of the things this is early in the park uh adventure uh they decided that there were there were not there were not there was not going to be any titles right we were, we were all you were either you were either uh clerical which is what i was when i was a secretary or you're a research scientist so my first card when I got it when I started working for Alan said research Diana Mary research scientist, um, <laughs> you know that sort of uh, sort of fell out pretty quickly. But um, I mean the, the, the they didn't start having titles, but you know the 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 feel of it kind of lost its cachet. Um, but um, no, for a long long time. Um, I suppose there was, a, I mean, there's a little bit of that. I mean, I think that, um, I think that had something to do probably with why I was, I was not able to, I was finally, uh, kind of run off because I didn't have a credential, but, um, who knows, you know, uh, but it was not, it was not something that was very noticeable for me most of the time I was at Park. Uh, you know, whether somebody had the, in fact, you know, going off, you know, I, listen, I got my PhD from Alan Kay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, you think, you think, you think working under Alan Kay or going to Stanford, which one would you do, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that that's kind of what I felt about it. I, you know, yeah. most of the advanced stuff I, you know, I, and it probably it probably didn't you know there are probably certain things that would have I I would have had a much kind of more successful career had I gotten a, a little more mathematics in in me. The only mathematics I ever used was the uh, Pythagorean theorem, you know, uh, uh, because in order to uh, to uh, uh, to figure uh, you know some of the, the the diameter of a circle basically. But anyway, I, you know, um, it really was, it really wasn't a big thing. Um, uh, I think, you know, at, by the time I, by the time I left, it, it did become much more of an issue. But, but then I was gone. Yeah. Um, so then, could you maybe um describe the state of small talk in the industry when you know either today or when you retired i think by the time i retired um uh, it had pretty much lost its cachet as far as i could tell yeah um you know the 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 uh the program at Chubb was pretty long in the tooth. By that time, Capital was what, like 20 years old? Um, and I don't know what new things were being done in it. I didn't, nothing that I heard much about. Uh, people were doing, uh, I mean, God help us, they were doing things in, uh, you know, in HTML and shit like that you'll pardon my french uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so you know i you know when when that you know that that still just blows my mind you know that 
that people moved into that complexity, you know, just they just seemed to love complexity. Um, I think they're very wrong about that, but then they're rich and I'm not, so. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I you know, I I still am quite bemused. I mean, I think it'll be interesting when you have this uh, gathering uh, to see what other people, how other people, what their take on that is. Um, yeah. Um, uh, will that be recorded, by the way? Yes. Oh, uh, so the. Um... So the, the there's going to be two two events back to back. One the 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 one that um, you know you were um, we were asking you to be a part of was was a sort of VIP members only event um, that uh -huh. will be recorded and the video will be released later. Um, whereas the event after that, which is a public event, will be live streamed. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I would like to see both the video and see the live stream. So we'll definitely get you both. Yeah. Okay. Um, perfect. Yeah, and actually, the the public the public event you can sign up for now actually on our website. So I'll oh, okay. I'll, I'll send you the link to that. Great. Thank you. That'd, yeah. that'd be great. I uh, I'm really sorry I can't be there, but it just I can't make that work. I really apologize. Yeah. Although you know we are going to have another event in October um, to celebrate um, Dan and Adele's Fellows Awards. So um, if, if that's something that you could come to, we'd be, you know, okay, we'd be pretty to, happy to have you there. Okay, well, I'll have to explore that and see how that works out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're wrapping up, but we just have a couple more questions. If that's okay. okay. Yeah. Um, have at it. Could you maybe reflect on the impact of small talk over the last 50 years? Well, I just told you something. Yeah. <laughs> I just said, you know, how come HTML had that big, has had that much impact? How come people were willing to put up with that? <laughs> Small talk should have just blown that out of the water. And um, so, you know, I, I'll say something slightly varied from that, uh, very, uh, sort of off to the side of that. Um, when we thought so, uh, so when we so you know you know the center thing called the web. Mm -hmm. Well, that thing. When we were at Park, we thought what would be really great is if you could sit at your computer and you could log into the Library of Congress and find anything you wanted to find. Well, that became the internet. Mm -hmm. And it became Wikipedia, and it became Google. And the search algorithms, Alan would have claimed, I think he would agree that he said this, the, the only way to do this is you have to invert all the data, index it, do all kinds of organizing of the data. What actually happened is, is that, not, this is oh, way oversimplified, but what actually happened is basically you do pattern matching. You know, you, you say, look for this string. Now that's, you know, and and it's it's just it's very brute force, but there's enough computing power to do the brute force. And uh, I would have never in a million years have thought that you could do it that way. That it would be, and I don't think at the time that we were thinking about how how it was going to look, we would have that that Alan would have thought that even that you could possibly do that. It would you would ever have enough computational oof to do it. But and now we're overwhelmed with data and our access to data and our being data <laughs> and uh, um, and it's all a, a very simplistic mechanism for for searching it. 
mm-hmm. for uh, for traversing it. I guess is a better uh, a better way of putting it. You know, it's 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 more sophisticated than I'm saying, but it 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 it's shocking that a much simpler model than we thought is all that was required to liberate something like something like uh, the internet, access to information that way. Um, I think that some, to some extent that's happened with with things like small talk. Um, part of that has to do with what I talked about the free thing, but I think I don't I, I don't I don't. It's very hard for me to to separate myself because I am so captured by the idea of small talk, by the idea that it seems very extremely, it seems like the most simple way to think about problem solution with using computation. But it hasn't it has it hasn't come out that way. People use Python and they use all kinds of you know pretty Rudimentary stuff, it seems like to me. Am I wrong about that? I mean, is that am I just out of date? You know, I don't know. So that's it. So, so uh, you have to ask somebody smarter than me about why it didn't take off because I just it, to me it doesn't make sense. Could you reflect on how small talk has changed your life? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it gave me something to do for like 30 years. That was a whole lot more fun than being a secretary. Um, it gave me a lot of insight into um, the power of a simple idea, just to kind of contradict what I just hummed a few bars about. Um, the notion that I said earlier about going from ones and zeros to Wikipedia It just still seems totally mind blowing and uh and certainly informs me in how I think about life and and the world so yeah it had it had a lot to do with how I turned out and how it turned out for me yeah. Okay, so um, our final question is, what, what advice would you give to a young person um, starting out in computing today? Run like hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, so the hot thing right now and the thing I think about uh, well, I think about lots of things. I think about, I think about, is it possible for us to govern ourselves? So I think about, you know, I, I, I had a philosophy minor. I mean, I, you know, I think about things a lot. Um, but um, right now, artificial intelligence is is looking extremely um, powerful. And automation is, um, is making the notion of, um, the way I put it is, um, what, it's becoming more and more difficult to know what we are for. You know, for most of us growing up, it's been um, 
to uh, to work at a job and have a family and um, and have a house or something, you know, have a place to live. But a lot of the stuff that we do now is kind of more and more can be done without us. And um, then what are we for? I have a good friend who said, we're for art. And I think that's not a bad insight. Um, so what do we do? We should do art. We should do, we should do poetry. We should do, we should dance and sing, I guess. What is, what should somebody do? I don't know. I mean, Alan used to say there was no such thing as computer science. There's only about four thing, four big ideas and and um, recursion and lists and uh, um, I don't know a couple other things, uh, hashing and caching. Um, I guess, I don't know, I mean, you know, is computation still interesting to people? I mean, should it be? I mean, have a, you know, most of it's, most of it's been solved, hasn't it, or, or hasn't it? Has it just gotten so abstract that I don't understand it anymore? That seems, I mean, that would be kind of the most reasonable thing for me to say, I think, but, um, um, and maybe that is the case, but um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the answer to your question is I don't know. <laughs> well, um, that's a the good as answer as any, I would say. It's an honest um, answer. <laughs> it's an honest answer. Yeah, it's a humble answer. It's a humble answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you very much. Oh, it's um, been this a, was, this was Hanson, great. it's been a great delight. I, I don't think I've given you as much as I would have liked, but I hope I gave you enough. Um, no, we, you've got plenty. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I hope you admired our, the flamingos in the background. Yeah, I've been looking at them for the last uh, three <laughs> hours. <laughs> um, so I have a wonderful life, and I'm very happy to have been a been a part of this. Uh, I, you know, you know, there's a lot of history I got to live through. I've been amazingly privileged to do that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And thank you very much.